Okay, so we're going to take up two more questions with friction, all right? So first question is a hockey puck sliding over uh, a frictionless surface. It's probably not realistic, well, frictionless surface. And then it hits a patch of rough ice. So you have a puck that's sliding this way. And then maybe there's a patch of rough ice, which is 0 0.25. Uh, meters in length. Remember, it's got the distance have to be in meters, okay? And it has an initial speed of 5 meters per second. And we want to know what is the final speed after it leaves that rough patch. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think is going to happen over that rough patch? Don't slow down, right? Because there's going to be a net force, and that net force is going to be pointing the opposite direction of motion, right? So it's going to act to slow it down. Now, are some of you disturbed that we don't have the mass here? Maybe we don't need it. So if the puck is moving across horizontally, and we think about the forces acting down and up, we know there's a force acting down, which is the weight. There is a force then acting up, right? Which is what? Okay. Now... If you think about the definition of friction, friction is mu fn. Now, number force is F equals ma. So the force of friction can also be written as the mass of an object times the acceleration due to friction. Because all forces are F equals ma. And the normal force can be written as mass times the acceleration due to the normal force. Right? Okay. All forces can be written as F equals MA, right? So we have a we have a formula here that says F F equals mu of N. So what I've done here is I say, okay, the force of friction can be written as the mass times the acceleration due to friction. That's how you write any force. And a normal force can be written as the mass times the acceleration of the normal force. You'll notice when the weight and the normal force are equal that we actually have a formula here. This is when they're equal that the acceleration due to friction is the same as mu times the acceleration of the normal force. But the normal force is the same as what? The normal force is the same as the weight. So what do you think this value for acceleration should be then? Should be 9.8. Oh, yeah, yeah. One way, one other way you can look at it is this way is because the, these two vectors are exactly the same, then we can think of that their accelerations are also the same. The acceleration down has to be the same as the acceleration up. If the normal force is the same as the weight, then we could say that the acceleration of the normal force is the same as the acceleration of gravity. So now, don't we have the acceleration of friction? It's mu times g. So the acceleration of friction then is 0 0.2 times 9.8, which is very close to 2. Okay, I'm just going to round it off. Now, can we work out the final speed? What do we have? We have vi we have the uh, we have a now we have a as being two, but wouldn't it be negative two if we say that this is positive? So it should be negative two, and then we have the distance, which is zero point two five. So what equation, given v i, v f, a, and d, would you use to solve for this? Yeah, I would use that one. Uh, convert it to meters, child. 
Okay, so let's solve for VF. VF then would be the square root of VI squared, which is what? VI was 5 squared plus 2 times negative 2 times the distance, which is 0 0.25. So that 5 squared is 25. And then we have 4 times 0.25, which is 1. So it's a square root of 24. 4.9. So the answer is 4.9. Okay. So it's slowed down a little bit, but not, yeah, not that much. It's still slowed down a little bit. Okay. That's one question. We'll do one more and then we'll call it a day. Now in this question, because we've been only talking about one dimensional direction, we'll do one with 2D. Okay, but look, it's no different than what you did with the section on kinematics. We have a boat. Here's my boat, and it's being pulled by two tugboats. Okay, the amount of force each tugboat tugboat pulls is exactly the same. It's ten thousand newtons, right? So it's ten thousand here. It's ten thousand here. Okay, the angle is a little bit different though. So one pulls with an angle of 20 degrees, and the other one pulls with an angle of 30 degrees, right? So let's say I wanted to figure out what my net force was. Well, I'm going to have to add up those two vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing we did with kinematics. I'm going to take each vector, and I'm going to resolve it into F x and fy. So I have one vector which is 10,000 newtons but I want a horizontal and I want a vertical component, right? So if I ask for the vertical component for call this one f1 then it wouldn't it be sine 20 times 10,000? And what would this horizontal component be? It would be cosine 20 times uh, 10,000. And if I ask for the, what's called, I'll call it F2, what would this component be? Well, this angle is 30, so this would be sine 30 times 10,000. And what would that horizontal component be? Now, uh, what would the components of F1 be? So sine 20 times 10,000 would be what? And cosine 20 times 10,000 would be what? Then we'll work it out. Which one? Which one, uh, Rafi? Yeah. 3, 4, 2, 0, and 4x. Now, x, they're both east, so that's not going to be a problem. What would cosine 30 times 10,000 be? It's close, I think it's close to 8,700, right? Yeah, but this one... So this, the first one's pointing north, but the second one's pointing, you can see it's pointing south, right? So this is going to be a negative value, and the sine of 30 is half, so that should be 5,000. So is this really anything different than we did before? The answer is no. This is exactly what you did with the kinematic section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the net force in the x and in the y. So what's the net force in the x? It looks very close to 19,000. What is it? Is it 18,057? 18,057? Way off. Okay, and what's this one? 3420 and then minus 5,000. Minus 1580. Okay, now 
what do you think you do next? We have to we have to combine these two and get a net force, right? So we're going to take the sum of the squares. And if you do the sum of the squares, what is your net force? What do you get as your net force? It's probably going to be very close. And we can also get a direction, but because we're running out of time, I'll, I'll leave the direction out for now. Um, so let's say we want to get the actual net force. Remember, the friction is going to act exactly the opposite direction of motion. So there's going to be a net force. Friction is going to act the opposite way. So if this is like, for example, east 10 degrees south, for instance, because we didn't work with the direction, then the friction should be west. 10 degrees north. It should be the exact opposite. And if you want to resolve the actual net force with the friction, then it would be 18,126 minus the frictional force, which is 15,000. So our net force then would be the difference between the applied force from the tugboats and that frictional force, which would be 3,126. Right. And then if you want to do the acceleration, which I'll leave it to you, it would just simply be the net force divided by the mass, which is 3126 over, how heavy was the boat? 1 times 10 to the 6 kilograms, and you can finish that off on your own. Okay? I am recording, and you heard the bell again. In my, so the second time in a row now. Thank you.